You can't fit a human in there. It's too tiny. Hey, Pit Monsters, what is up? <laughs> I've got two, five great accessories that I want to share with you guys today. But first, let's go shopping. Are you ready? Yes. Jeez. That's a different car. We, we definitely going to be emotional. We're going to be needing a bigger car. <laughs> like Tesla? Don't talk nasty about my little car, right? Little cars for little girls. So the idea is that we're going to get some groceries because I want to show you guys these different techniques of cooking. Yeah. Adding flavor is one of the most important things you can do as a pit master. Now, of course, whoa. Is this safe? Skirt, skirt. <laughs> Adding flavors is one of the most important things you can do. And that is what I'm here for as a pit master. So I've got five accessories that I want to share with you guys. One, for instance, is the cast iron griddle. Morse and I, we use it a lot of times for our videos. We did a lot of good burgers with our cast iron. What it does is give you a really, really good sear on your grill. What was your favorite burger, Morrison? Favorite burger? Yeah. Well, still smash burger. Smash burger. If you want a good smash burger, you're gonna be needing a good cast iron griddle. Get it nice and hot, smash the meat on it, and then get a good crust. I have no idea what we're going to cook. Uh, I can tell you what we're gonna be cooking it on. We're cooking on an infusion board, and I haven't thought of a recipe yet, but what I'm looking for with an infusion board, and you guys must not know what an infusion board is. I think we have to show them first. Let's show them. Do you have it? It's at home. Now that's how we do it in the Netherlands. <laughs> We're there. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. Yay! Park it, park it, park it! Come on, park it! <laughs> you can't fit a human in there. It's too tiny. Ice cream, ice cream. Chucky monkey or caramel brownie? Denise, there's an air fryer in the back. I know. Why is there an air fryer in the back of your car? Do you need it? <laughs> Why do you think it's in the back of the car? <laughs> Why? Look, look at the amount of chocolate. You ready, Marshall? Yes. Try, 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 try. Oh. What did you get? You got No. What's that, huh? I don't know. No. Come on, man. How can, you, how can you do that to me? I saw this picture. And, you know, I'm a sucker for, for pictures. So I thought maybe get some sausages. With the, this the guy car. is getting his own sausage. And by the way, what did you get? You get the Bavarian white sausage with white buns and, and, and w what else? That's it? That's it. Curry. A little bit of curry. Oh, I like sausage. And you were there too. I just want to get in the shade, that's all. Let's get the side table out. Basically, all it needs is a little bit of charcoal and we're ready to go. But before we're going to fire it up, I want to show you my next accessory. This is a rotisserie and I love using this thing. It adds so much flavor to my dishes when we spit roast a whole hog or if we make porchetta it does so much for the flavor you get the fat that's rendering off but it's sticking to the meat it creates this beautiful crust it works so well so this is also one of my favorite accessories that will get you perfect flavor on your meat remember we did the whole hog morsel <laughs> that's some tasty pork Actually, we cooked it like lechon. Super, super awesome flavors. The video's not up yet, but it's coming up in the next coming days, so make sure you check it out. This is the infusion board, and this thing is freaking awesome. Look at it, it's got all these little ridges, and it will hold on to the flavor and hold on to the food. And the instruction says we have to soak it, and then we have to keep water close, just in case it catches fire. <laughs> I love it when it says that in the manual. As you can see, it wants to float. So that's why we're gonna put on a weight. Yay! 
That's the best I can do. They will have to do. In the meantime, we are going to fire up our barbecue. We'll put in some charcoal, put in the fire starters, and light them up. We'll wait until our charcoal is fully lit up, then we'll start cooking. And when it's hot, we're going to put a cast iron pan over the fire. We'll wait for our pan to come up to temperature. Hey, Marcin, he's got a bigger lawnmower than us. Look at that thing. My garden, no! Guess what, we've got cheese, brother. I've got some beautiful mozzarella and some gorgonzola. <laughs> This is the spicy stuff. You definitely want to try this. It's gonna blow your mind. That's what I call fungus. And if you don't like this, just use a Gouda cheese or Emmentaler or whatever you like, whatever your preference is. That's the good thing about cheese. There's so many of it. I just like using Gorgonzola for this recipe. Now for our recipe, we're also gonna be needing some chicken and I've already seasoned these chicken thighs with a good barbecue rub. You can use any barbecue rub that you like. Let's put it on a grill. So we're gonna grill this chicken until it's completely cooked through and it has a core temperature of 75 degrees Celsius. Let's flip this around. Now we'll put some oil in the pan, put in our onions, Put in our bell peppers, add a little bit of barbecue rub. In this case, I'm adding Italy from Metacalis. <laughs> this is gonna be so good. If you could smell this, you would be freaking out right now. Our plank has been soaked. Time to get our bell peppers and onions off. Just spread them out over the plank. I will put this over the grill grate. Put the rest aside. There we go. I've got this smoked ham and we're going to put it in a pan and crispen it up. It's smoked, it's fat, it's gonna be just as good as bacon. This is gonna be good. <laughs> the moisture of the plank is evaporating. All the heat's coming from the bottom. The moisture is working its way up, getting into those bell peppers and onions. Next, we're gonna put our chicken on. We're gonna build this up like one big party. Our bacon is crispened up, now it's time to put it on a chicken. Oh yeah, a layering up flavors. This is gonna be so tasty. Only one thing left to do, Marcin. Your favorite part. Cheese. And <laughs> it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, sure? Yeah, it's gone. You smell that? Of course you can't smell it, but let me tell you, the smell of the cedar plank, it's giving off that smoke flavor and you can already see it. The heat is catching on to that plank, it's providing us with smoke. It's steaming setter flavors. This is gonna be very, very tasty. I got this beautiful bulb of fresh buffalo mozzarella. This stuff is so good. I could just eat this like it is right now. Mm. Wow, amazing. So put the mozzarella on top. I want this to melt all over. I want this to become creamy. Oh yeah. Now I'm also gonna put some of that gorgonzola on top. Remember, if you don't like gorgonzola, just take something else. It's gonna be just fine. Good, I will be a good option. But I'm sticking that in here. This is gonna make things extra spicy. Now we're gonna close the lid and let it cook until it's fully molded. That cheese has to be gooey and all over the place. Then it's done. Our chicken has been cooking for around 10 minutes. Oh, we're getting close. I just wanted to get a little more of that darkness, the edges. So we're gonna let this go for another 10 minutes. Oh, more sun, it's done. First thing that we're going to do is sprinkle on a little bit more rub, just to get that color popping. And the next step, yes sir, we're gonna put on some liquor. We want some good caramelization, we want some flavor from the Licora 43. <laughs> Now that's what I call a barbecue show. We went from a pale white to a nice dark brown caramelized color. We got those popping spots where we get that beautiful charred effect. We also have that cedar plank pushing out the flavors of cedar, pushing out smoke from burning on the bottom. This is promising to be a delicious dish. What do you think, Marcel? It's, it's too hot for those kind of fires. <laughs> so let's take this inside, Morrison, so we can eat this while you sit in the AC. I don't want you to get overheated. Well, you should be happy it's so hot. No, we're Dutch. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's way too freaking hot. Looking good. <laughs> oh. 
I wish you guys could be here eating this with me. First bite, go in it. Mm. Wow. That sweetness from the liquor. Mm. With the saltiness of the cheese. Yeah. Come. Put the camera down. Grab a knife and fork. Let's destroy this. It's too bad that you don't like cheese. You notice that the gorgonzola is not as heavy anymore. The mozzarella, it melted out. And I love how we've got multiple layers of flavor. So basically the cedar plank is a little bit in the back. We got a little bit of smoke flavor. We got that beautiful roasted bell pepper and roasted onion. This is good stuff. This is really comforting food. This plank, can you use it again? Oh yeah. It's a little bit burned on the bottom. But you can wash it off and use it again. It's really thick, so maybe you have two or three, uh, three times use out of one plank. I love how it adds flavor, especially with the little crevice here. When you put liquor in that, man, it just stays in there and evaporates up into your meat. You know what I like the most? What's the best part when you eat um, uh, a cheese sandwich, a grilled cheese sandwich. The, the crunchy part. cheese on the outside. Crunchy cheese on the outside. And what do you have here? Crunchy cheese on the outside. Everywhere. No. Yeah. And it's burnt, it sticks to the plank, and that's what I love. So if you're feeling sad for Denise, then... I'm hungry. Please give us a big thumbs up. Do you feel sad for Denise? Will you, will you thumbs up this video? But, um, no, what? We talked about the infusion plank and we got the most beautiful recipe. So definitely go check that out. Um, if I think about it, I'm gonna put some links down below in the video description for you guys. Now we are going to take a look at the next two and we're going to incorporate them into one theme. Woohoo! <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about a syringe, people. That's right. This thing can give you a lot of flavor. To demonstrate this, we're going to take some water, add some salt, dissolve the salt. Now we basically created a brine and we're going to inject that brine into our pork and it will make it taste like ham. I want to do a little experiment, so I'm going to cut my pork into two. We'll take some of our brine, put it in our syringe and inject it into our pork. Yeah, look at the pork getting thick, all filled up with salty water. We're going to use this rub. I've never used this rub before, so it's kind of like a test as well, but what does it smell like? More so, almost like tobacco, like Yafansi Jongens. It must be some kind of like coffee flavored rub. Let's give it a try. So we'll sprinkle the rub on both of our pork loins. Look at that color. That's amazing. We'll put these on the grill over indirect heat and we're gonna let them go real slowly. And when they're cooking, we're going to close the lid. Now we wait. It's all about waiting. Barbecue is a waiting game, guys. Woohoo, looking good. Time to get a sear on these things. No flames. Why not? Ah, it's not always a big spectacle. I, you've gotten plenty of flames today. Let's go back and play the clip now where you were complaining about wanting a C. Now I'm going to show you guys my final trick for adding flavor at the barbecue. Barbecue sauce. And how do you get it on? using a brush. Another one of my favorite accessories. Put the barbecue sauce on and brush it on. This one might look a little too simple, but it's very important. The brush does a lot of good work. It allows you to spread out the barbecue sauce equally over your ribs, your pork, your roast, whatever you're cooking. This thing is very important to a pitmaster and it's well worth investing in a good brush. So what happens if you use like uh, a paintbrush? You can use it, but you know what happens when you paint your house? These little hairs, they stick to your, uh, to your paint. Same thing happens to your meat. You got all these hairs. I like to use silicone, easy to clean, works well every time. All we need from this barbecue sauce is to caramelize a little bit, to make sure that it sticks to the meat. We got our barbecue sauce caramelizing onto the meat and our meat is done. Two feet. Two feet, back up. Okay, let's carve this up because I'm really excited about letting you guys try this and figuring out which one is the one that we brined and what that does to the meat. Look at how juicy that is. Still a little bit pink on the inside, which is fantastic. I love it like that. 
Look at that. Look at how juicy that is. All right. That's why I got the camera. So Denise and Morrison, I want you both to pick a piece of the same pile and tell me which one it is, brined or not brined. So, tell me, brined or not brined? Not brined. Not brined? Mm -hmm. Okay, try the other one. I think I'm right. I think we are right. This is more pork taste, like more bacon flavor, more, I don't know, saltiness. Ham? Yeah. So Denise, which one is best? Say the first one. Hmm? First one, not brine better? Really? Yeah. But the first one was absolutely dry. Oh, maybe it's because it was the first bite and all the flavors hit me. The brine version has so much more flavor and it's more tender and, and juicy. Never mind, these guys are just talking dumb. What I wanted to show you guys is the difference between brine and not brine and the brine version injecting it it adds a lot of flavor and if you like it or if you don't like it it doesn't really matter it will make your pork taste like ham and basically what it tells you is that you can add flavors to your meat so it's one of the accessories you're gonna need if you want to be a serious pit master you're also gonna need a brush to put your flavor on top of that meat on the outside get it on all in the right places and rotisserie works really well a cast iron griddle to get the beautiful sear on the outside and if you really want to try something new try that infusion board that thing is freaking awesome i'm going to close off this video hey morrison denise where'd they go hey i'm going to leave you guys to it i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did then leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below hope to see you guys next time until then oh we almost forgot our patrons you guys freaking rock we almost made it to 100 or when you're watching this video we made it to 100 patrons freaking awesome thank you youtube members see you guys next time until then it's makkelijk and keep on grill what are you guys doing oh they're stealing the meat hey i didn't taste it yet get back here Brian's there.